and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our stamp set, Tiny Spring Friends and its coordinating dies. So let's go ahead and check it out. This set is so cute and it has tiny little friends dressed up for both spring and Easter. So we have some tiny characters with cute little bunny ears, some are holding Easter eggs. This little girl here has a watering can and then these tiny little flowers. Oh my gosh, I love them so much. Here's another little girl in a cute little spring outfit with a little Peter Pan collar. They're just so fun and so adorable and really fun to mix and match. And here's another one with bunny ears. Here we have a cute little one. I love the flowers in their hair. They're just so fun and so sweet and it's so much fun to color in all of their different clothes. We also have a tiny bunny, a tiny chick. We also have a little pile of Easter eggs and then we have a little basket as well. That's really cute because you can have the different characters hold the basket and then another little grouping of tiny flowers. We have a tiny umbrella and a tiny little cloud to go along with it and the characters can hold the umbrella as well. And and then we have this tiny little flower that you could add to your scene and a tiny heart too. There's some fun little sentiments in this set. We have a happy, which you can combine with happy Easter, or you could do happy spring. And we also have a feel better sentiment that goes really well with the umbrella and the cloud. So now we're gonna use our Copic markers to add some color to these fun images. And it's so much fun to color in these tiny friends like people that are in your life. So you can color them like your friends and family, which is so cute to be able to personalize a card that way. Tiny Spring Friends is the latest in our tiny series. We have a bunch of tiny sets. So we have tiny friends, we have tiny birthday friends, tiny spring friends, and then we also have things like tiny fairy tale and tiny Christmas and all these little characters that you can mix and match. They're just so much fun. Some of my favorite ways to use these tiny characters is with our giant word dies. So they're really fun to layer on top of the edges of the different letters. It just looks adorable and so sweet. It's also really great to use them in interactive dies because we have those smaller windows like in Magic Picture Changer, Magic Iris, Flippin' Awesome, and you can create cute tiny scenes with these fun characters. Now, when I add color to these characters, I try to keep my coloring really simple just to make sure that the blending is nice and easy in such a small area. So I have a tendency to either use one marker or two markers and I'll lay down my dark marker and then blend it out with my light, just like that. I'm not trying to add in too much color because I don't want my markers to bleed out and I want it to look really, really nice. So keep the coloring simple on these characters and it's gonna look absolutely amazing. As I said earlier, one of my favorite things is coloring in their little outfits because it's almost like I'm like a little fashion designer or something. So I like to take out a bunch of markers that look nice together and then I'll color those outfits in with those markers so that they coordinate really nicely on my card. Another fun way to pick out colors for these outfits is to use whatever pattern paper that you might be using or inks you're blending with. Use markers that match those pattern papers or those inks and then your tiny friends are gonna look perfect in your cards. I have a lot of fun coloring in their hair and for this character here, I took out a darker marker to color in some darker roots for her and I thought it looked, made the hair look a little more realistic. It's really cute that way. And then here I'm gonna give her a fun little sweater set and matching skirt option. I feel like khaki pants are just perfect for spring and my favorite color for khaki pants are these E80 colors. They end up looking really, really nice as khaki pants and it's a really great way to fill those in. You could also do them as blue jeans as well and those B90 colors are really great for blue jeans. For the little bunny, I'm just adding a little pink to the ear and cheek and then a little bit just of a light gray marker just to add a little bit of highlight so that it's not just plain white on the bunny. And then here for the Easter eggs and the umbrella, I'm using the same colors that I've been using for all of the clothes of my characters. That way everything is gonna coordinate nicely. And so I'm just gonna go in with all of these colors, color in the flowers, color in the Easter eggs, and you can see how everything is just matching and it's gonna be perfect for the card that I have in mind. These are the coordinating dies for the set which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. Then you can take those dies and line them up with your stamped images, hold them in place with some low tack tape, run it through the die cut machine and you'll have perfectly cut out images every time. Here is a look at all of the images from the set. They are so cute and fun. I love that you can have that little girl watering the flowers, which is just adorable. We have the other character there holding the umbrella with the rain cloud overhead, which is perfect for a feel better card. And you can have the different characters also hold the basket too, um, which is just so fun and cute. And it's so much fun to create scenes with these characters.
Now it's time to create a card with these adorable characters, and we're going to take some of that brand new textured cardstock and die cut it with the largest of the small stitched rectangles. Now it's going to have that beautiful stitch detail. We're also going to take out the Flower Market 6x6 pad, and there's this really pretty aqua colored stripe that is a perfect match. It looks so beautiful with this textured cardstock. And so we're going to trim that down to be 5.5 by 4.25 for a standard size card base, and then we'll layer these two pieces together. And this is going to become the base of our design. One of my favorite ways to use Tiny Friends is with our Giant Messages stamp set. So in this case, I'm going to take out the Giant Easter Messages stamp set, and I went ahead and colored in this image with the same colors that I colored all the Tiny Spring Friends characters clothes with. And I showed the coloring for this in the Intro to Giant Easter Messages video, so make sure to check that out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our adorable Tiny Spring Friends that we just colored and stamped and die cut, and we're going to layer them around this oval. So here I'm going to add some tape runner to the top of my oval and I'm going to take a bunch of the characters and tuck them in right at the top of the oval and I think this looks so cute like they're peeking up from behind this big sign. So I'm going to take two of my or three of my tiny spring friends and layer those behind. Then we're going to take some foam squares and we're going to add that to the back of this whole thing to pop it off of the card just to add something a little bit extra especially since this is more of a simple card. Then once that's added, I'm going to layer some more Tiny Spring Friends underneath using some foam squares. And there are these new micro foam dots. They're so awesome because they're super tiny and they're perfect for behind tiny characters like the Tiny Spring Friends. And so we're going to start layering those on the bottom of this scene. And this card design is so cute and so much fun. And one of the things I love about it is that you could repeat this same layout for different types of cards. So this is a spring slash Easter card, but you could take the giant birthday messages and the tiny birthday friends and do a really similar layout but have this really awesome birthday card. So I love that there's a lot of fun ways to use these characters and I love when I can use a layout that I've already worked on for different types of cards like birthday and thank you and spring etc. So here we've got a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. We're just going to add some tape runner to that and then layer the card front on top and then this card is all done. It's so cute and so much fun. I just love these little tiny spring friends. They're so adorable. It reminds me of like doll houses or little miniatures. They're just so much fun to use. Next up, we're going to be creating a shaker card, and it's going to have a fun little grassy hill scene at the bottom. So we're going to die cut some hills using the stitched till side borders out of some cardstock that is a four and a quarter inches wide, and we're going to be doing some ink blending. We're going to use Twisted Citron and also Lucky Clover, and I really love the mix of those inks. And so we're going to layer on a bunch of the Twisted Citron, and then we'll bring up some of the darker Lucky Clover up from the bottom. I just love the mix of these two ink colors. I think it just looks magical and it's just a really pretty springy green. And then next we're going to repeat the same inking on the other hill because we're going to have these little layered hillsides. So we'll add on the Twisted Citron and then we'll bring that Lucky Clover in from the bottom. And then we have two beautiful hills and we're going to put these aside to dry and start to work on the sentiment. And we're going to be using the giant happy Easter die and some of the gotta have gingham rainbow. And we're going to cut this word out of all of these different colors of gingham paper to create this cool little rainbow. And right now we were inspired by Grace to create this card and she did this really cool layering of gingham and it is so much fun. And we're going to show you some tips and tricks on how to do it. We're also going to die cut the same Happy Easter from some textured cardstock, and that's going to be a layer for behind that we'll use in a little bit. But first we need to work on our rainbow gingham. So we're going to take the pink one and we're going to trim off just a little bit of it. So we're just going to have the first couple letters. Then we'll take the orange and we'll trim off a little bit more. And here you can see how those are going to start to layer. Then we'll move our way down the rainbow. So for the yellow, we'll trim off just a little bit more. Then we'll work on the green, which we'll trim off once again, just a little bit more. And then we'll do the same thing with the blue. And then for the purple, we're not going to trim it. We actually, you'll see one that's trimmed on the side. That was by accident. You're actually going to leave your last one completely full. Now, as we started to layer these, we realized this is going to be kind of weird because it's going to be really thick on one side and really thin on the other. So we came up with a fun solution for this. So we're going to add some liquid glue with the glue tube to the back, and then we're going to layer the pink onto the orange. 
Then we'll add some liquid glue just to the outside edge of the letters, so towards the A's. And then we're going to layer that onto the yellow. But we don't actually need the H and the E part of the yellow. We actually only need the words going forward. So we're just going to flip it over and trim that right off. And that's going to keep you from having weird excess bulk at the end of this. Now you may think, well, why not just trim lots of skinny pieces and line them up? It's just really hard to line that up that way. So this actually ended up being easier, even though it seems kind of funny to do it this way. But now we're going to repeat the same thing. So you'll get to see it again. We're adding liquid glue just on those last letters. So they're on the edge of the P and the S. And then we're going to attach that to the green. And you can see it's starting to fill in our P, the rest of the S and the T. And then we can just trim off the part that's more towards the H and the E. That way we're not having a lot of excess bulk, but everything is lining up nice and easy. So now we're going to add some liquid glue again towards the end of those letters, layer it on the blue, and then we can just trim off any part of the blue that isn't showing because we don't need that part, right? So we're going to trim that off so that we don't have a bunch of excess thickness on our sentiment. Now we're at the last part of our sentiment, so we're going to layer this onto the purple. Once again, we're just adding glue towards the end of the sentiment. We'll layer that on. That's going to fill in our last letters. And then we can just trim off the earlier part of the purple because we don't need that. We don't need the HPP part. We just need the Y and the R. So we'll flip that over and just trim that right off. Now we have a rainbow sentiment made of gingham pattern paper and it's so cute and sweet. We're going to add some liquid glue to the back and then we're going to layer that onto that teal colored textured cardstock Happy Easter just to give it a little bit of a shadow and that's really going to help it pop off of our shaker window that we're going to be creating next. So we're just going to layer that right on offset just a little bit to the right and now we have this really great shadow and this fun rainbow pattern. Now it's time to work on the shaker window. So we're going to take out the stitched rectangle frame. This is the largest A2 size. And then also a piece of acetate cut to an A2 size as well, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. And then remember those hills that we worked on earlier? We're going to add those into the scene. Now these hills were a bit too tall, so then we're going to go ahead and add a little pencil mark here. We're kind of seeing how the scene's going to look, make a little pencil mark so that we know where to trim them off, and then just trim them off so that they're the perfect height. Then we'll start to create this window scene. So we're going to layer our two pieces together here with some tape runner, and then we're gonna layer these hills behind that stitched rectangle frame. So we're just gonna add some liquid glue along the bottom edge and layer those hills on top. Then next, we're gonna add some liquid glue around the whole frame and also on the back of those hills, and then we can attach our acetate window. And this is gonna become the window for our shaker. Then next, we're going to add our awesome rainbow giant happy Easter to the front of that acetate window. The next step is going to be creating the shaker well that all of our glitter is going to float around in. And there's a couple ways to do this. You can use some foam to do it, foam tape, but in this case, we're actually going to use a bunch of die cuts. So we're going to die cut that same stitch rectangle frame out of white cardstock eight different times, and we're going to layer these all together. So we're going to take some liquid glue with the glue tube and put it all around the frame, and then we're going to layer another frame on top. And we're going to keep doing this and stacking them to create height. So the other way that you could do this is just start with one frame and layer some foam tape all of the way around. And both ways work. It's just a personal preference thing. I kind of go back and forth. Today, this is Rebecca creating this card, and she loves to stack die cuts for shakers. So that's what she decided to do was to stack all of these to create some nice height so that our shaker pieces are going to move around really, really well in this awesome shaker. Next, to create a sky, we're going to cut down some spiffy speckles paper to five and a half by four and a quarter. Then we're going to add some liquid glue to the back of our stack of frames, and we're going to add that onto that cute little sky piece. And this is going to create the background for the card. Next, we're going to use an anti-static powder tool just to remove any excess adhesive or any excess static that might be there so that our glitter is going to work really, really well. And the shaker bits that we're going to use for this card is chunky glitter. Chunky glitter is so awesome and it works really, really great for shakers. So we're going to dump a bunch of that into the center of this card. Then we can take the acetate window that we worked on earlier. We're going to take some liquid glue and we're going to layer that right over the back of the frame and just the frame. Then we can add that on top. And now we've created our awesome shaker. So we're just going to layer that right on there. 
Next, we're gonna add our awesome tiny spring friends into this scene. So we went ahead, stamped, colored, and die cut a bunch of these adorable characters, and we're gonna layer them into the grassy hills. So we'll add some tape runner onto all of these and then just layer them into the scene. And it doesn't matter where you layer them, it's gonna look cute no matter what. And I absolutely love seeing this scene come together. So I love that these little characters are great for something like more graphic, like the card we did before where they were all hanging out around the sentiment, or this card where they're in this cute little grassy scene doing a fun little Easter egg hunt and the shaker behind it just makes it so special. Now the card is all done and look how cute this is. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. I love that all of that glitter hides behind those grassy hills and then as you shake the card, it pops out. So here it's behind the hills and then you can see it kind of fill the whole scene with glitter. Oh my gosh, this would just make someone say, look how fun this is. I couldn't help myself. I just kept playing with it over and over and I just love those adorable little tiny friends. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And this first card by Maureen is gonna blow you away. She used the tiny friends in a flippin awesome card and she created these adorable little scenes so as you pull the flippin awesome you get these cute little scenes with the tiny friends and the easter eggs and the little bunnies and then the happy easter sentiment is a perfect fit for the panel that comes out at the end and i just adore this card Callie added the tiny spring friends into a window scene spring scene and they are so cute and perfect for that window scene I love here how Mindy used our four square backdrop to create cute little tiny scenes for our tiny spring friends. And this card by Audrey is so fun and fresh with that yellow gingham on the side and then the cute tiny spring friends hanging out in that window scene. I love how Kara did some beautiful masking to create a one layer scene with the tiny spring friends. And then here you can see our tiny spring friends in the window frame, which is just adorable as if we're looking out on an Easter egg hunt. And this card here by Lynette is so sweet and I love that she just used the chicks and eggs and basket and bunny from the scene to create this adorable Easter card. So we cannot wait to see what you guys create with tiny spring friends, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!